All right, thank you and good night. Um, I feel like we should play Duck, Duck, Goose or something right now. Hold on, phone is on. Oh, Brad, your phone is on. Brad. Brad's always Instagramming. Uh, guys, thank you so much for having us tonight. We are so excited to be here. Um, I don't know if this is a record for most people on stage at the 92nd Street Y. It's got to be, right? Why are you looking at me? I don't know. In terms of, like, number of What time? was the question? Most people ever on stage at the 92nd Street Y, do you think? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. We got confirmation. It's a yes. Um, so thank you for having us. Uh, we have a lot of people. I'm going to try to ask everybody a question. We'll have some banter, and then we will take audience questions. So as you guys know, there's cards going around. You can fill them out. They'll somehow get backstage magically, and we'll ask your guys questions. Does that sound, sound good? Okay, I'm going to start. Um, I think the question that we all get asked probably the most uh, while working at PA is, how do I get a job at Bon Appetit? Um, so Molly, I want to start with you. Um, to work in the Bon Appetit test kitchen, do you need to have worked in a restaurant or gone to cooking school prior? This feels pointed because I know how you feel about cooking school and the fact that I did not go. Um, I got my start in restaurants and never went to cooking school. I don't really think you need to pay for cooking school. I don't know how many people on stage went to cooking school. Rappo, obviously you did. One, two, three. In any case, um, yeah. I feel... <laughs> no, I'm, the, I'm with you, Molly. Daddy. I'm, I'm with sorry. You. I just feel like you can get that same education a lot faster and get paid like a You're right. teeny it's tiny good. bit for it. I didn't um, pay. In restaurants. Well, how, ma how many of you guys have worked the line in a restaurant? Okay. Wow. Can I add into that? Yeah, go ahead. School can be a scam, but I, you know, it would have. <laughs> no, listen, but like it would have taken me a. Like, it was also a very cool door opener, quickly into something other than restaurants. I didn't go to culinary school to work at a restaurant. If you want to work at restaurants, I think you should just go work at restaurants. Oh. What are you talking about? Wait, <laughs> I thought that was beautiful. Well, why did you go to culinary? Wait, so you you where did you go to culinary school? Uh, I went to ICE in Manhattan. Then. And so then, but you. For what, you went there to not work at a restaurant? Exactly, I wanted to get, because like the food industry is so big, I wanted to get into something other than restaurants. Like kind of like Bon Appetit Test Kitchen. Um, Chris, it's true, word on the street is that you worked at Vogue magazine before. That is also true. What did yeah. you do, what did you do at Vogue? I, I found myself Last somehow five. working in the fashion department. Um, <laughs> I know, right? Um, uh, and I was like, I somehow got put in charge of booking um, stylists, models, hair and makeup talent for photo shoots for Vogue. I, I, I literally don't know. I was an intern at InStyle um, in the home design department. How old were you? I was like 23. Did Anna and, ever talk to you? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, oh completely. And part of me sure. wanting to get into cooking was that like I knew I never ever wanted to have to talk to Anna Winter about... <laughs> About why I couldn't She's get awesome. such and such model, you know, such and such place. Like, I would so much rather be talking about food. I mean, you know, even with Anna. Um, <laughs> Priya, uh, you came to BA as a contributing writer, having worked at Lucky Peach and New York Times, etc. Were you prepared for all of a sudden being in videos? Was that part of the plan? No. <laughs> um, Matt Ducker had a video, like... Put some, put some time on my calendar. I didn't know what that was. Uh, and he was like, you have a book coming out. You have recipes. Do you want to go in front of the camera? And I said, sure. And then what I didn't realize is that, like, truly what you see is, like, like, you literally show up to the test kitchen and they just start filming. They're not like, here's your intro. Here's what you should say. Now do this. Now do this. There's not a lot of coaching. There's no, there's no coaching whatsoever. They just, like, you know, I would just say things, and I'd be like, oh, I hope that doesn't make it in, and all the things that you're like, I hope that doesn't make it in, are always what makes it in, like, right? Like, when you're like, I had that moment, I said something really dumb, and they're like, yes. And you can see the producer, they're writing down things you say as you're being filmed, and you're like, oh, no, you wrote that down. Yeah. Were you nervous the first time? Yes. I was really nervous because... Matt was like, let's try, like, he like, told me it was like a tryout. So, I don't know, it was very... The old tryout trick. Yeah. <laughs> I was very nervous. Also, like, I don't have a traditional cooking background. I worked at restaurants in college. 
I um, wrote a cookbook where I documented my mother's recipes and just sort of like learned to cook her recipes along this process, but I would not consider myself an expert cook or like an expert on Indian food period. But what they said was like, you know, lean into the mistakes. If you, are we, if you mess up, uh, you know, that's okay. Like this is all about sort of like the reality of cooking. It's more relatable, you know, if you, you know, maybe it's okay if you burn some spices or your knife skills aren't perfect. And I really appreciated that. Um, like the videos that Priya is describing that you guys all love and watch so much. Thank you very much. Um, that's not how we started out. Uh, Carla, you've been a BA forever. Um, <laughs> what do you, what do you, re I have, so have I. Um, what do you remember about those early days of the videos? Uh, I can remember the first video. It was like what was it? Me and Vinny, and I made a steak, and uh, and the night before we were gonna shoot again. Like no one had really coached me or said what it was gonna happen. And the night before, I was like, I don't know why I thought this, but the night before, I was like, oh, it'll be really funny if I come up with a bunch of puns for steak. <laughs> and so I like made a quick list, and I was nervous the night before, you know? I was like, oh, it'll be funny if I say like, don't make a mistake. Um, <laughs> And then I came in the, the next day, but the thing that was so different then was we did all of our own like ordering, shopping, prepping, like we didn't have a Rhoda, you guys know Rhoda. Um, we, yeah, we didn't have a stylist setting us up or doing swaps, so I just kind of like came in and threw down a cutting board and, and, and made a steak, which was overcooked because I was doing butter basting and we had one camera and he was like, oh, you know, like do it a little longer, do it a little longer. And I was like, we gotta go, we gotta get it out of the pan. And then those very early comments were like, nice try little girl, but your, <laughs> your steak is overcooked. And I was like, I know. <laughs> Um, all right, let's be honest, guys. Who reads the comments on their own videos? Be honest. Not anymore. I do. Not anymore. I, I used to. I read all. What, so you say you used to, and then... I, now my dad reads the comments and upvotes the ones that he likes. And then, yeah, that, <laughs> I feel like my mom, she would like print them out and mail them to me. Yeah. In case you didn't see this, Brad, so do you interact with them at all, or are you just sort of... No, I, no I, don't, um, I don't really have an active personal YouTube account, so I... Uh, no, I just kind of read them. <laughs> That's what you were doing. And today. I, 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 there's no re I don't responding. I don't think. It's, I don't think. Did you ever respond? <clears throat> no. Okay. How do you even respond? You can write well, back. You can write back. I don't know. You can, you can respond. respond. You can respond. <laughs> Has anyone ever responded? Wait, you're reading them though. I just yeah. feel like Brad would respond. I definitely I would, read them. That. I don't read all of them, but like when a video comes out, I'm like, I'll read the first like 50. I'm like, just gonna get a pulse on like 50. how the people are the feeling. First 50. <laughs> That's not that many comments. Engage the vibe quickly, you know? and then you're like, Wait. they hate it, they love it. All right, next. I used Has, to do it at the beginning, but then it just get it got in my head. Yeah, they were like, yeah. I like her, but her voice. I'm like, I can't do anything about that. <laughs> Wait, can I go I, on a brief sub tangent? Yes. Oh, who on this stage goes on Reddit? Because Who in the audience goes on the BA Reddit feed? Anyone? Go on to Reddit. They're looking at you. Condé Nast owns Reddit, so we'll take the traffic. Where are you? Uh, not joking. Um, well, I just But there's a, in all seriousness, how do, what's it called? It's like just BA subreddit, Bon Appetit? Look at me. Well, I, I just Carl, brought like a bunch of old parents. Here. Yeah, but I it's like, it's a fanatical audience. I just bring it up because you know who's a fanatical Redditor is Alex Beggs who's a, one of our senior staff writers, and she's amazing. But the only reason I know about Bon Appetit Reddit is because she once sent me a screenshot of a, a thread that was titled, it was, it was something like, Where's Christina? <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and the subtitle was, I hardly know what she's done th since Thanksgiving. <laughs> and I read it and I was like, Sam. <laughs> Wait, but have you read, one of my, my friend Kate is really into fan fiction. Did you know that there's fan fiction? Like short stories and Wait, stuff? wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> what? Explain, explain that reaction. What, do you guys know Kate? <laughs> what are you guys not telling us? What's yeah. fan fiction? What is These fan lights fiction? are really bright. We don't understand what's going on out there. Wait, yeah, can you explain it? Exa I'm a little, I'm a little dim. Explain it? Talk about fan fiction. Well, We 
we can talk about it afterwards. <laughs> I genuinely have no idea what you're talking Wait, about. Wait, how inappropriate is it? Well, uh, it, it well, can't. <laughs> if it involves Andy, it can't be too it, inappropriate. It only sends me stuff if I'm mentioned. She, because she just like generally monitors the Bon Appetit <laughs> fan fiction just to like. Who's she? Kate's my best friend. Oh, okay. <laughs> She just like is really into fan fiction, and she was like, "Oh, you know that there's." Um... Can you give an example, please? Uh, I need a okay. Can someone in the audience give us I, an example? There's no. a lot of. Please don't. Um, Isn't it just like if someone wrote a story and they titled it like Priya Krishna and the Sorcerer's Stone, and it's just like a fictional tale? It's like I a mean. it's like a fantastical fictional tale but of like there's romance. Adventures of Priya. Is it, is it romance? But it's also like I think rated there's romance. R. So, some of it is um, rated R for language, or what are we talking about here? Oh, no. <laughs> you can ask your next question. <laughs> yeah, I am not touching this one. Uh, speaking of fans, I'm going to direct this at Brad and Claire. Um, uh, our fans can be very fanatical at times, uh, as we've learned. What is kind of like the weirdest, wackiest thing that has happened to either one of you while out in the real world what? regarding a Bon Appetit fan? I'll start. Okay. Sorry, Brad. Please, no, please do. Um, <laughs> so, I guess the strangest instance, like I get, sometimes someone will stop me on the street and say like, oh, I love your videos or, you know, I, I watch you sometimes. on YouTube. Some, sometimes it doesn't happen at all because like I just go about my normal life and I live on that. You mean like for one block you can get away with that? No, yeah. more than that. More than one block. Sometimes it's on the subway, but like in my neighborhood, I feel like the, the YouTube audience is pretty young. So in my neighborhood, it tends to be not so many young people. So <laughs> I don't really get recognized too much. Um, but I was on vacation a couple of years ago. Um, we went to Mexico City and we took like a day trip to... The, like Mayan pyramids and I was like in some cheesy gift shop like in the like trying to get out of the sun and someone stopped me and was like oh my god are you Claire Savitz are you do, like do you do the YouTube videos or something like that and I was like this is the most unlikely place I think I could ever possibly get <laughs> recognized so that was maybe the strangest but um in general all the interactions are extremely positive somebody made an gratifying. action figure of you do you know that an action figure somebody's working on an action figure what do you what do you mean and the video team it? wants to buy it <laughs> Oh, all right. Um, I was not. I've not been made aware. Do I get a? Do I get a cut of that? Uh, probably. Great. He made. He um, made thirty. He's only made one, but the goal is to make thirty, and you're oh. getting one. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Good to know. Yeah. Um, the but, not for like the strangest for me. Not really like a strange thing. I just really dig how some people like how creative they are and how like they, some people draw things that like blow me away, like, oh, like yeah. portraits and stuff. And it's like, that's pretty amazing. And then this one lady, she got um, a garlic tattoo, which I was, <laughs> and like, like said, like I did this because of you. And I, I, I found that pretty awesome. <laughs> I mean, like the only thing that could have been more weird if it was like on her neck or something, you know? Have there been any Bon Appetit YouTube tattoos yet? people getting a Claire tattoo or something. Just a, a garlic. <laughs> no, that's not like of your face. What if it's like of Brad's face on her? On I think her. somebody did you and me and maybe Babish. Oh my God, remember knife. that. Yes, Chris. It right? was a trio. A trio on, on superimposed on a chef's knife wow. on their arm. Oh, my God. I forgot about that. That qualifies as weird. Yeah. It's An actual there. tattoo? An actual, actual. tattoo. Oh, wow. Permanent. I, no, one should, no one should get tattoos of faces, though, because then they age. And I mean, you guys are... No, it's, I'm all, all with you. But what if they got a tattoo of Andy and your skin is perfect I and you're like forever be, like you know, Don't get them going, yeah. all right, please. Um, Sola, you're the new kid on the block, so to speak. Woo! Yeah. Woo! I was not. I guess, what did you think you were going to be walking into when you took a job in the test kitchen and were you prepared for all this? I have no expectations, <laughs> but definitely not this. <laughs> I just thought I'd be cooking. Honestly, or did, were you like, oh man, I'm gonna have to be like a video star? I didn't or know that YouTube was a big deal. <laughs> I only used YouTube to like look up how to repair a toilet. You can do that? Oh yeah. yeah. You got a problem with your toilet? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> um, so then at what point were you like, oh, this is actually a thing? When. You got talking to the mic. Oh yeah, when, when I was on the train with my headphones on, just trying to go to work. And someone was like, hey, how's it going, Sola? I was like, oh, people watch this. 
clearly. <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> um, all right, random question. Who is the most judgmental person in the BA test kitchen? Wait, you. Are judgmental? <laughs> hey, no, I'm not in the test kitchen. That's just my job. Yeah. I would say it's between Adam <laughs> or Chris. It's obviously Chris. Yeah, Morocco. <laughs> Chris, for sure. But it's always oh. very fair. And it's kind. just fair. I would say it's very, also very honest. I would say Chris is it's critical con- and you're judgmental. <laughs> I think Hard agree. Agree. Chris, Chris agree. has Chris has constructive, yes. constructive criticism. Constructive. Andy, obviously you've seen the videos. It's what he doesn't say. It's just like the eye rolls and when he like <laughs> when he looks at true. what someone's cooking and just walks away. The, there's a right way. It's like wrong. when Anna Wintour used to look at Chris and not even say anything about his outfit. He's just like, we're going to move on. Um, who's on Team Clog here and who's not in, on Team Sneaker? I'm on both. Clog. Clog? You're both. Show of hands for clogs. I like clogs. I love a clog. But I also but like sneakers. Like I don't not love yeah. You're like, yeah, Boz, do you ever wear clogs? No. No. It's on the season. Andy, you claimed you wore. Clogs. I do wear. Uh, Claire, you he has does. them. He does not wear. Yeah, he has. Them. I've never seen. I've Andy never in seen clogs. you in clogs. I have a confession to make. There are like seven pairs of clogs in the bag in the test kitchen. Half of them are mine. I'm yes. sorry. <laughs> um, all right, Gabby. Since you got the mic. Um, I got so, the mic. So you took over from Brad as test kitchen manager. <laughs> it's true. Been a while. What exactly does a test kitchen manager do? You don't have to answer that. <laughs> well, I probably do a lot more than what Brad was doing at the end because it's really busy. Don't even and get I me love started, Brad. Gabby. All right. Should we show footage of the walk-in these days? Okay, I, uh, I don't even know. If, you, if you ever go and watch the first episode of It's Alive where Brad uh, makes a kombucha, it's a kombucha, right? Yes. That, that was just Brad... All day. That was that was not a like show. That was just we just followed Brad when he's supposed to be working. We haven't really deviated much from that game plan. <laughs> We've gotten I've gotten a little better at certain things, but I mean we're still pretty. We're still one camera. Yeah. It's alive. I mean there's a there's no uh, food stylist. It's my turn. Wait, it's Gabby's mic. So Gabby. You see what I have to deal with all day. Um, a test kitchen manager uh, manages the kitchen. I do all the food ordering. Uh, personal shopper. I am 24/7 babysitter. Sometimes <laughs> I I make sure that everybody has what they like. I make sure everybody's in the right station at the right time. Um, sometimes we overlap. I um, Make really sure that you're a traffic cop. These I days. am the cop. Yeah. yeah. Lately, the I am. The other day, I was watching you because I was in for the day practice, practicing recipe, and a million people came in, and everybody wanted something from you, and I didn't know who any of them were. And I think what I said to someone standing next to me was like, "Gabby needs to be less nice." <laughs> I am nice, whatever I do. Uh, but no, basically I run the kitchen. I make sure that everything is in at the right time. Sometimes it doesn't happen and I have to fix it on the fly. And, and nowadays, I, you know, we have a lot of visitors and uh, people from other floors sneaking in. People that, people that they work in the same building and they're like, I'm looking for the cafeteria. Is it here? And they work. Oh, you're shooting a video. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, so, so I'm like, who are you? Uh, but yeah, that's that's what I. And, and do. you also finally got us composting and recycling. I got composting and recycling. <laughs> yes. Uh, and I would just say it's something we are fighting for for a long time. And you're at a hundred stories World Trade Center, and Gabby is like, I'm getting this done. And, yes. And she did. So I God did. bless you for that. Brad, what do you remember? What was the best piece of advice you gave Gabby, or did you give her? Any, did she just ignore everything I you think told you her? You should ask her that. She, oh, I don't know. Yeah, did Brad give you any good advice, Gabby? I think um, a lot. <laughs> yeah, Friday wine is one of them. Um, no, he told me, and he used to say that when I was an assistant, don't worry, tomorrow is another day. That's the best advice. And so, Brad, you hired Gabby? Is that kind of correct, sort of? or? I guess what we did was like the screening. I did handle the interviews when we yes. were looking for someone. Um, but like, I think the, the rubber stamp was Carla. 
Yes. And then the rubber, and then Adam, and then the like, second rubber yeah. stamp. Yeah. Lots of rubber stamps. Yeah. But Brad, so you were back. So we used to be at uh, Four Times Square, right on Forty Second and Broadway. Oh yeah. So Fourth you, floor. What was when you started at BA, which was two thousand what twelve or something or? I don't know. Twenty eleven. So you and I 11? were like the same August first. Yeah. You were same same. Right around there. And what were your responsibilities at that point? Um, it was like test kitchen. At first, I was an intern, and then it was like a test kitchen assistant. Which was basically just like a kind of a, a foot in the door glorified dishwasher, who like who also shopped and stuff. But it was cool. You a know? dishwasher with a rad top knot. <laughs> yeah, we had some. Wild oh, yeah, Brad had a top knot back then. Yeah, I remember we had some weird stuff. Photos. You know what? We all go through things. You know. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So. Go ahead, sorry. No, no. I was just saying. So it's interesting. So there's like kind of two dimensions to the test kitchen. Brad and now Gabby sort of ran the operations of the kitchen and how it functions and all the food coming in and deliveries and everything. But then Carla, formerly as our longtime food director, now a solo star, and Chris as our new test kitchen director, what do you guys do? Because that's a whole other trains coming in and out of the station, but in a different way. Yeah, I mean, I mean, basically oversee like all the recipe content and it's like it's print and it's digital and it's, you know, the people and making sure everybody here has, you know, or at least some of the people, um, you know, have, have like what they need to kind of, you know, kind of thrive and uh, to ele help them elevate their own work. Um, but yeah, it's it's a lot of meetings. I mean, it's like, you know, yeah. as you well know, meetings, a lot of meetings. Carla, I remember. Yeah, because obviously. We also make a magazine and all these other things. And I, I remember seeing some of those comments on Reddit like, wait, I heard them refer to it as the Bon Appetit Test Kitchen and that there's a magazine related to it. <laughs> and you're like, oh my God. Um, Carl, do you remember the early days of the trying to integrate the CNE, Condé Nast Entertainment, filming schedule? with the schedule of you having to do food photo shoots for the magazine, for the websites and everything. And then our friend Matt Ducker, who we were talking about, was like, no, 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 we need to film this uh, today at noon. We're like, no, you, no, no, we don't. He's I like, yes, we I do. I remember it well. <laughs> yeah, uh, Chris and I were just joking about this the other day, like at the beginning, sort of moving down to One World Trade and all of a sudden having this huge kitchen with natural light and like, people and the magazine and three websites and then we started doing video and it was like okay so on Tuesdays between noon and four <laughs> you can shoot video and slowly over time like realized we need to shoot more and then at a certain point it was just like well as long as we can keep working like shoot as much as you want but as long as it doesn't interrupt what the everybody else is doing but you and had to give up a kitchen island we had to give up an like, island but you know it, it, we, it was fine like some people moved over and whatever but the biggest thing was like as long as you can shoot and we can work at the same time and like that that'll work for sound or light or whatever then like fine yeah i think one of the one of the keys which we kind of have fun with in the videos now is that molly or carl whoever will be cooking and then all of a sudden andy or chris will be using the blender and they'll turn around and give him that nasty look, but it's like... Andy oh. does it on purpose. Yes, though. well, he obviously does. <laughs> but then it's at least we, oh, that can be part of the video. We don't have to stop shooting, and it can just, like, it all, the whole plan was, like, just have the kitchen as it actually is, keep the cameras rolling. Right. And I think that was not, it wasn't planned, and the kitchen wasn't set up to shoot video there, so that was just something that, w like, that's how it had to go. Although but Alex become, Grossman, our old creative director, he wanted all the overhead cameras put yeah. in when we were building it. He kept it. saying he was going to come in over the weekend and change all the light bulbs, and I was like, okay, <laughs> we'll see him, we'll see you on Monday. But then that has become this, like, it, when you started doing, I started doing videos and realizing that when you're at a loss or you're staring into the black hole of the lens, like, to be able to turn around and talk to Chris or Andy who are right there or like help me and like get help from a friend it could I can't imagine it any other way yeah it's definitely supportive um Andy speaking of Andy so you guys also have actual jobs yes <laughs> <laughs> what does that entail because like while you are video stars there's the other seven hours of the day or whatever uh well we, we have three verticals we have basically uh ba.com and healthyish Chris is also the co-editor of uh, Healthyish, a food editor. And then the magazine, we have what? Ten issues? Ten issues Ten a year. issues. You can get for like $10 a year if you guys haven't subscribed yet. <laughs> and so there's recipes that are going in that magazine. And that whole process is where we, we're pitching ideas. Some stick, some don't. 
Uh, and then once they get approved, the food editors come up with a lineup uh, that gets approved by Adam. And then we go into development. And uh, we test, we test, we test, and we do tastings. We're now with Chris, our story editor. Uh, maybe some additional people might show up. Uh, definitely not if it's my tasting, because I will <laughs> give you a dirty look. Uh, uh, and then once the recipe is at a good place, then we pass it to a cross tester uh, who's never made the recipe before, and they make it exactly as it's written, and then ideally it works. And Solo, you've done a lot of cross testing. That's why I'm here. When you started. <laughs> But you also make amazing recipes and amazing team lunch. Um, Andy, you had said something to me the other day that if a recipe off the record oh, yes. requires more record. than one cross test, it's not a good recipe. No, if 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 it goes back, to, that no, I look at it this way: if a recipe, if you have to cross test a recipe more than twice, you need to send it back to the developer, so they need to kind of rework it and fix it, and then it gets cross tested. Can you can you talk to us about cross testing Solo, and what does that what does that mean exactly? So I will go through the recipe the first time, like as it's written, and hopefully it all works out. And then if it doesn't, we talk about it, make some adjustments, do it again, maybe do it again. Ideally, not more than that. Yeah. But you know, you never know what happens. But you have to see Sola's process. Like honestly, like when you came in and you started cooking recipes, you know, and cross testing for us, like everything was sequenced out in steps. Like her own surgical logic. And the sticky like, friggin things. surgery. She puts colors. Right? Numbers, things. little tabs, like tabs of, we of, love of her. masking tape that she like cut. She didn't just rip it. She snipped it. <laughs> Chris. She would index them. You're telling lines. them way too much it was right now. Fucking mental. Chris, you, we knew she was serious when every day her knives tray with a same towel. setup. She's got her rags in spot. I like that about you. You mean she's Thank neat you, and organized? Like about. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, she might kill people organized, you know. Like, and I mean, and also God bless Solo. She also like I'm like, what are you doing with that pork belly? So like, oh, I'm making tacos today for lunch for everybody. And she had a whole pork belly and all the salsas and, and yeah. We can't let the pork belly go to waste. No, but I don't know. But yeah, you, you're kind of, yeah. The, Solo the also, she knows like what foods you like and she'll slack me when like there's a food downstairs that like she thinks that I'd like. Yeah. Upstairs. Yeah. And Upstairs. She made, made amazing birthday cake that looked like a <laughs> putting green. It was like three tiers and that was phenomenal. Thank you. <laughs> um, che, is it fair to say that we editors on the 26th floor do all the real work so these guys can just go on camera and do their thing? Well, uh, when Andy was talking about tastings, I was like, oh, should we talk about our fights? <laughs> well, but we're like... Should we talk about the day that you Christina yelled at me? Christina Chase like my, my work wife, so... <laughs> it's the, it's the, well, yeah, I mean, I guess it's, it's an interesting process, and I think it's... I've never worked in a place where we've had, you know, two separate teams food and editorial that need to work so seamlessly together um, in order to create a story uh, that both tells the story of why you should care and the recipes that we think you should cook as a result of that story. And that could be, that could be a story that we work on with chefs um, at restaurants that we think are really awesome right now. That could also just be stories that we think of. Um, you know, we just did like a, you just worked, you guys, uh, Chris and Molly just worked on these really awesome Dutch oven recipes because all we ever talk about is like how much we love a Dutch oven. Um, and so for us as editors, it's interesting because a lot of the times I feel like, and Carla knows this too because she's also had to toe that line before, like we kind of often have to play bad cop if let's say a recipe, and I look at, I'm looking at you, Andy, um, when, when a recipe feels like maybe just a touch too chic. <laughs> <laughs> Complicated. Plus, beautiful. You have one accessory on too many you need to take <laughs> yeah. something off. Well, okay, so uh, I mean, I think you. What was be... your fight about? We fight all Which the time. Well, I know what I. Uh, but you know what? What did I say back there? We Our do stories good work. are good. We do good work. <laughs> <laughs> um, you yes, also admitted I mean, they're always late. Uh, bo both of us, oh, though. <laughs> never put us together on a story together. <laughs> we'll never get it <laughs> on time. Um, but I was going to say that like it's interesting for us because you know you guys, for the you guys are making the recipes and it's our job to sell those recipes and to make them as appealing and as accessible as we can. And where you guys do an amazing job is like you think so much like home cooks, 
and that's what we do best, I think. But sometimes, you know, sometimes I think I have to, we, we fight about this, so I'll just be like, no one's gonna do this, Andy. No one's gonna follow this instruction to oblique cut your carrots. <laughs> <laughs> they better. It's a beautiful cut. It's a beautiful cut. <laughs> Keep fighting the good fight, Andy, okay? You eat with your eyes, you guys. You eat with your eyes. Um, we're going to do a sidebar question. Claire, apparently you love really bad reality TV. <laughs> this is so what, sorry. What are your three favorite bad reality TV shows? Wait, my... What, what, was what are your three best worst reality TV shows? Oh, this happened backstage. Andy blew up my spot. <laughs> talk, I was talking about how much I love Bravo reality shows. Number one, Below Deck, the greatest show ever created. <laughs> Wait, so that's, is that basically just like upstairs, downstairs, yes, but on a yacht? on a huge yacht with really terribly behaved guests. Like Downton Abbey for a yacht. It's, yeah, sort of. Who owns, is, there, is, it, is the yacht rented or is it owned by like a family? No, it's like they, they, there's like a captain and a crew and they are on it for a couple months and then they get a new group of guests every three days. It's just watch it. Just go home and watch it. It's amazing. And then... The, I know Andy, Andy, you tattled on me, but you watch it too. Okay, that Real was Housewives. only because I was in a relationship with someone who would watch it. Not right, more. and the, order, the ranking is Atlanta, then Beverly Hills, <laughs> then New York. Right? Okay, that's it. Beverly Hills. Uh, I can't believe that was my question. <laughs> can, I, can I have another one? <laughs> you get one question, that was it. <laughs> Uh, Brad. Yeah. Crossbow or composite bow? What the hell is a composite bow? Oh. Isn't that what the thing is with all the things? or was that Compound. What? Compound bow. bow. <laughs> composite, com compound. I have strong feelings. I mean, to each their own, but I'm a, I'm a compound bow. Kind of. what? what are your feelings? Um, that, well, I prefer it. I think it's just more my style. <laughs> the crossbows, uh, I mean. I, Don't say it. I'm not going Don't to. Don't say it. Crossbows, you know, Don't I just say think it, they're, Brad. they're very accurate. It's almost, you might as well just shoot a gun. It's like, it, it's, not, it's not archery. Huh? <laughs> do, you, do you hunt or you mostly do archery? I would say I mostly do archery, but I do enjoy uh, hunting. What yeah. video were you, or was I doing, where you <clears throat> unbox the crossbow in the background of the There was video? no crossbows. <laughs> Whatever that thing was. It was a compound bow. It was Con your video, Claire. Was it in Hawaii? And it came in a box, and I, I was So I was, like, excited. doing video, and I see the camera guy. He's like, I'm facing the opposite direction. Brad's behind me, and I see the camera guy, like, kind of tilt the camera, and there's Brad in the background with, like, a three-foot-tall bow just, like, taken out of the box. So it's like, that's the stuff that happens in the background of the videos. At, it's a good day. I'll tell you that. <laughs> All right, let's go around, for, starting with you, Carla. Best way to cook an egg? Uh, oh, we mean, oh, we're not going to have any po I love a poached egg. Period. Did you do that whole reported thing? What's so, I, I think a lot of us are probably scared to poach eggs because the water, I just, what is the key to a good poached egg? Well, I've done several videos about it, so. <laughs> um, no vortex, no vinegar. No vortex? No, you just gotta, I think the key is straining the egg, right? That, that makes a big difference. When you crack it into crack a Crack it into a fine mesh strainer and all that kind of like, the, the more watery part of the white, um, goes through, and then you get the really nice shape. And um, I do make a vortex, and I put the guy in there, and then just go with your spoon, keep him turning, two and a half minutes, buttered English muffin, mm. a lot of salt and pepper, a lot of butter. Yeah, I think that the, the sieve trick is really key. The sieve, and I did, I, I don't always remember, and it like makes, it makes a huge difference. Gabby, we're going, we're going around, everybody. Oh, wait, wait, yeah. I'm not gonna explain why, but the scramble. <laughs> Anybody can do a I don't really like favorites, like to have like as a question. But I, I really, I, I was still talking. Like a perfect. <laughs> What'd you say? You gotta love this guy. Yeah, I tell yeah, you. I hope so. I was still I really, talking. Gavin, yeah, my turn. I really do love, and I screw him up sometimes. But I really do love a perfect like butter, velvety three egg omelet. Just like little any salt, color or no butter. color. No. No I mean, sometimes I'll put a little on there. A little runny on the inside or no? A little runny? what? A little runny on the inside? Yeah. Perfectly custardy. Not runny, not wet, but just yeah. perfect. What's Any the French term? Baboos. Baboos, like that. dog slobber. Yeah. It's very good. Uh, crispy. Crispy fried. Yeah. Crunchy edges. Mm. Golden brown. Runny yolk, though. 
Runny yolk. Yes, I would say the same, like an oil fried, like I would baste the whites. Really how much crisp. How much oil do you need in the pan? One egg, oil. small skillet. I don't know, I'm adding like probably three tablespoons. Non-stick? Half a cup. Super Not, yeah, casual. what kind of skillet? Non-stick? No, no, no. I want it like semi-depressed. I do cast yeah, iron. Too much. You just tilt the pan and you baste it. You know? What kind of oil? You're throwing some what sumac kind of at the end. What? what kind of fat? Extra virgin olive oil. All right, I'm into Sp that. Go Spanish style. Yeah, That's it's how they do it. A little salt. A little bit of flaky salt. salt. <laughs> yeah. Brad, I don't got any favorites, but I'm going to ask all these questions. Uh, Sola. You just called me Sola. At oh my God. <laughs> Priya, sorry. Oh, my God, I'm sorry. Uh, I am probably the only person in the test kitchen who doesn't love egg yolks. Wow. Yeah. Uh, my mom used to just, like, scoop them. Growing up, I didn't even know that eggs had yolks. My mom would just scoop them out. I was just like, it's just white. Uh, so when I make eggs, usually the way I'm making them is I hard boil them, scoop out the yolk, and then chop them up and just like douse them with salt and pepper. It's Wait, just like still what? <laughs> yeah. Did you guys not How watch the egg know video? This? Your turn. <laughs> I just I just don't I don't know like I just it's not your fault. runny yolks. It's just I Maybe didn't it is. didn't grow up with them. I don't know. It's just it's that that, that fatty taste is just really odd. To me. What about in like yolks in things like creme anglaise or you know um, carbonara? I'm, yeah, carbonara. I don't Caesar I don't salad. really like carbonara because it's like too yolky. Fatty. But Caesar creme salad? anglaise I feel like you can't. You it usually is like masked by other things. You can't aioli? It. Not a big aioli fan. I don't like mayo either. Caesar. Wow. All right, next person. He's like. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to help you, Priya. Here, love you, Priya. No, no, let's dig in. <laughs> What happened in your childhood? Sea cell? Uh, uh, for me, it's a fast, soft scramble. Lots of butter, lots of salt. What kind of pan? Uh, like an eight inch nonstick. Need nonstick for. And like how fast yes. are we talking? I mean, like fast. Like you're almost like just like, I don't when know. You're hungry. 40, 45 seconds. If that. Constant you, motion. You definitely Constant. whip your eggs before they go in the pan, right? I do whip them before they go Thank in the you. pan. I'm no, not, not monster. He's not a monster. <laughs> Hi, Danny. I like the marble. I like the marble day. You two, medium Hi, meat. That's why I don't like the favorites. I like them all. The, the yolk's yellow, the white's white. Nope. Marbled eggs, not a thing. Nope. Marble eggs forever. Yay. <laughs> Easy. All right, moving on. I'm, I'm with Carla. I'm a poach. That's good. How do you like to eat the poach once it's poached? <laughs> like in a salad, on toast? <laughs> oh, um... <laughs> Like on a uh, frise lardon. For oh, example. love. Oh, on anything where on anything where you're going to employ the molten yolk as a dressing of your of your dish. Priya would not beans. like that. <laughs> Priya would hate this. <laughs> it's like Priya's nightmare. <laughs> it really is. Um, I would say either medium boil or I'm with Carla and Che uh, poached. When we say medium, how many minutes do we mean for medium? Oh, Adam, you love nothing more than to talk about the number of minutes to hard boil eggs. Well, this is your, your favorite important. topic. Um, like a seven to eight minute egg, seven and a half minutes. So the yolk's kind of still like, um, yeah, like jammy? Yeah, we talk about jammy yolks a lot. I have a question. Like a topic of conversation. Can, any, can, what do you think about cold jammy? I know you hate oh, them. No, no, no. I Brad no, hates no. them. I can't do it. No. Yeah. What are you talking about? Why not? I won't no. Between that and the marbled egg. eggs, you're out. <laughs> He, he's talking about like somebody made eggs in the test kitchen and they've been sitting there in the window forever. Yeah. And then he goes, are they cold? And I'm like, yeah. So he's like, no. But if no. you're really, yeah, yeah, I'll eat them. <laughs> um, well, this isn't fair because you guys all obviously just took all of them. <laughs> um, so I'm going to go rogue here and say I like them raw in my Caesar salad dressing. Yeah. <laughs> What's the key to making a good Caesar salad dressing? There are a lot. I can walk you through it. So <laughs> two egg yolks. I like two for like stability in the thicker dressing so it doesn't break. Um, grated garlic, lots of chopped anchovies, usually more than you think you need. Um, I do Worcestershire in mine, lemon juice, Dijon mustard, and then whisking constantly a very slow, slow, slow drip of neutral oil. I'm not a fan of olive oil in my Caesar dressing. Wow. And water? No. Lemon juice. Pepper? Oh yeah, black pepper. Oh my god. Wait, and cheese. Did you say garlic? Yeah. Okay. There Good. <laughs> um, <Thank God. laughs> one thing I so 
it's always amazes me that you guys go out and eat dinner after work, usually. <laughs> like, seriously, in all seriousness, like, if you're taste, going to tastings as part of the job, you're cooking all day, how do you manage your appetite? How do you manage to get an appetite to actually have a life outside of the test kitchen? I'll start this. Um, I do a thing called fasting, which everyone makes fun of me for. <laughs> and that is where at about 3 p.m. I declare I'm fasting until dinner, and you just don't eat anything for the next hour. I don't know hours. if 20 that's to 6 is fasting. considered fasting. That's just like considered normal. <laughs> a few hours. Anyway, this Relative is to how often you eat the rest of the day, that's like starvation. <laughs> Like this fasting is, first is like I young kipper. Already. That's fasting. Yeah, I do a daily fast. <laughs> For three hours. hours. Three hour fast and then you eat dinner. What are you gonna, Gab, Gabby says it. <laughs> oh my God. I know what they do. All of them. Um, that's not fasting, Molly. No. <laughs> I love you, but that's not fasting. Um, I said like most of us, I include myself, when you know you're going to have a big dinner, you try to pace yourself. It's true and so I can confirm this, when you start working at this kitchen, you gain like 10 pounds in the first two months, and then you start pacing yourself. You're like, no, I'm not gonna try those biscuits and then the cake and then the pasta and then whatever, whatever, whatever. So it's just like a matter of thinking, you're gonna go out, so drink a little of water, water like Andy, water like Brad and his Wait, special water. you didn't mention Zumba. Oh, I do Zumba, yeah. <laughs> well, we're talking about that, yes. No, I, yeah. I why, think why are we you talking to, about Zumba? Because that's how you, you get your appetite Zumba. back. Yes. I, I was just going to say, like, I think you have to draw, like, a very fine line between, like, eating and tasting. Right. You know, like, people make fun of, like, the absurdly small bites I take of things sometimes. Yeah. Yes. But that's because, like, when you're actually tasting something and thinking about the constituent parts of a dish and the balance of flavors. Did like you say constituent? I said constituent. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, you know, that's very different from, like, I'm freaking hungry. It's, like, 2 o'clock and I haven't eaten lunch yet. You know, if you're, if you're filling up on the stuff that you actually should be turning a critical eye on, you know, or a constructive eye, um, you know, like that's, it's just, it's not, it's not the same. What's the hardest thing to resist in the test kitchen when something is set out? Uh, just rice. Oh, isn't like, it rice. Pasta? rice. We rice. cook rice every like day almost. Eat a Big lot rice. of rice. Yeah, we have a, there's always a, what is it, a Zojirushi rice maker going? Short grain, brown or white. We do a good job. Sometimes chili crisp? If we're lucky. Hard chili crisp. Oh, the chili, chili crisp. crisp. We got some pickles. It's the best. Andy loves a chocolate like a, cookie, a, though. Uh, olive oil, crispy fried egg, and you have some rice, a little oh. chili crisp, you're good to go. Yeah. Um, Claire, what is the tastiest gourmet makes item you've made Like the, the, that you would actually want to eat on the reg? There's like a weird phenomenon where I forget every episode as soon as it ends. So like I don't... <laughs> if you ask me how many gourmet makes episodes... I've done it's like five. <laughs> like I like kind of remember Skittles. I like remember Twinkie and Gushers, and then it's like I think I did Snickers and Oreo, and then that was it. Um, today I made a really good one, but am I allowed to say what it was? Because it's gonna air in a couple yeah, months. Just say yeah, just that matter. Okay, for Come just on, for, for the this fans. small intimate group, um, I made a super delicious homemade. This is partly in comparison to the original, which is kind of gross. Was a uh, Cadbury cream egg, super tasty. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, spoiler. <laughs> Gasp. So wow, well, there's like the air get, stuck down in the room. Get, you should get Priya to come on and taste it. Uh. <laughs> oh, don't worry. It's 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 actually there was egg in it. Another it's spoiler, yoga. but um, it always helps when I mean the originals are always like beloved in their own way. But then you know, from a lot of these things, we haven't tasted them since we were kids. And then as an adult, you taste them, and your palate has changed. And I think just tastes in general have changed, and we all like things that are less sweet. And you taste it, and you're like this thing is kind of sucks. So in, in, in many cases, it's not harder to make an original that tastes better. The challenging part of gourmet makes often is like the visuals and the proportions and everything. Although sometimes, you know, taste is different, but like texture can be very hard to achieve. But, um, you know, every, every single one is a little bit different and my success is always, you know, it's measured and sometimes it's more successful than in other episodes. Carla, what's your favorite gourmet makes that Claire has made, taste-wise. Oh, that's hard. I felt like you, the Oreo was like perfect. Mm. Oreo was excellent. I, I felt like the, <laughs> yeah, every, you were proud and like it looked right uh -huh. and it had like, a, it wasn't there a custom 
stamp yeah. also. I still have a philosophical question about that episode, which is, is it cheating if you use the original to make the mold? Which I think it is. But I, but I did it. I don't know. But also, I'm, yeah, but also, Adam, what, do you remember when you tasted Hot Pocket? Do you remember what you said? I remember I, that. I, I remember it was delicious. Right. Do you remember, do you, but do you remember your comment about it? It was something not nice? It was like, it was, I think you were trying to be nice, but it was like, oh, wow, I've never tasted anything you made that actually was better than the original, or was like this good or something, so. I'm going to put that into context. Well, first of all, the Ben and Jerry's was phenomenal. Oh, that okay, episode. thank you. That was, think, that was fun. I guess my point was sometimes with the savory items, like you can't make a Dorito better than a Dorito. That like, is the hardest one. And yeah. also, I... Actually, Doritos was one episode where I felt like I didn't receive adequate praise for what a good job I did. <laughs> they were really you, good. You should have been like Molly and read your 7,000 comments. <laughs> right. No, I, I generally stay away. But I thought I did a great job. Andy, what's your favorite? You're always lurking behind her. I don't know. I think Oreos or... Um... I know I had a soft spot for the warheads, and you were so cool. caught off. And like, but but it was just like the first ten seconds, and then when the, once it became sweet, not so much. You did Reese's. Oh, the Reese's. That was the Reese's good. Reese's were good. Yeah. Sola. We there was one that I don't believe has been released. You can say. You can, it. You can say. Just, we're among friends. The, tot, the tots were great. Oh, the t we did tater tots. Tater tots. Really awesome. good. Hey, Sola has become. Like a little bit of a gourmet makes like a little bit of a guru for me. She's like helped me get good at tempering chocolate. Sola's really good at it. So thanks, Sola. But wait, to put Sola into context, so Claire was making homemade tater tots, which is cool and all, but then Sola's like, oh, I'm gonna make tater tot casserole. We had to. There was with, really no way not With, like, sh braised short ribs. And, I mean, that was insane. That was tasty. It, and then all the ta so a tater tot good. roof. That was when yeah. I was away. Like you were gone. You were gone? Chris, sorry. <laughs> that one too. But that was Go insane. away for one week, honestly. There yeah, a lot of people missed it. They don't compare. You guys went around. It was like beef stroganoff, but with tater tots. Mm. Um, good. What about exercise, Andy? <laughs> I, think, <coughs> I think all of us exercise. What, what, do you, what would you like? I mean, yeah, when do you find the time? And if you know, I've trained like, Adam a few times, by the way. I've, I've, I've given him some personal training. I, I did make the mistake of going to the gym once or twice with Andy when we were, like, traveling. It's not easy. It's just like... But I think, like, everyone, yeah, just to... I, I feel like you need to work out just to have an appetite for the test kitchen every day. I mean, yeah, yes, I do work out, like a lot of us do. I, 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 just, I just go to the gym and do my thing. Like an hour or less? Every they seven days, eight days a week. I would say five days a week. You would, it's not true. No, then. five days a week, five days a week. They handed me these audience these questions. <laughs> Thank you, Priya. I, I have one more question about Priya. Like, when, what was it like when your parents first saw you on video? And they, they, your parents like, oh, my God, you're a video star? What was that like? Oh, my God. Uh, my mom was, like, was kind of weirded out. My dad was I think on my very first episode when I made the he toast, my dad was like on a walk wearing his like cowboy hat and his sweatsuit. And he literally was like, oh, why did you include me in the video? But like secretly like had watched it like 10 times. Like <laughs> Brad and I filmed an episode of It's Alive and my dad answered shirtless. <laughs> that was the best. Yeah. And he like mailed a starter and he called he me. He mailed like, Brad's times. starter. Yeah, they're great. He branded it, Brad's like New York culture, something like that. Brad yeah, he's Dog. A, he's an entrepreneur at heart. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, audience questions. Brad, what is your most prized tool in the kitchen? Also, can we hang out? Uh, maybe. Well, who knows? Um, prized tool. Uh, I mean, I really... I'd have to say my then uh, my favorite knife that I use all the time. You know, it's just the cabbage like, killer. The yeah. cabbage killer. It's just a great shape. It's a workhorse. It holds a wicked edge. Um, and wicked edge. And it's just uh, you know, it's like a multi-tool. The thing's fantastic. Everywhere. The best thing about working in the B.A. Test Kitchen, you can always bring your knives in and Brad That's will not sharpen true. them for you. <laughs> you should definitely waiting. ask first. <laughs> yes. All right, Claire. Can you read the ingredients for the B.A. Test Kitchen staff? I don't understand the question. As if this was a recipe. I guess that's what would be like a, yeah. Oh, okay. Andy's the salt. <laughs> Andy's salty. <laughs> Maybe Andy and Carla. Carla's the MSG. 
the special secret ingredient. Um, Gabby's a little pinch of sugar. Brad is the something fermented, the fish sauce maybe, the soy sauce. Brad says soy sauce. Soy sauce. <laughs> or the miso, Brad's the miso. What am I making also? Salad dressing? Um, uh, I don't know, that's all I got. Good job. All right, uh, anyone can jump in with this one. I have half of a rotisserie chicken in my fridge. We've all that's been you. there. No shame. What should I do with it for dinner? I usually, when I'm in that situation, I'll do, uh, I'll make like a quick, like, like a taco or a soup, chicken soup. Like I usually have a uh, frozen stock and then you just need some noodles or vegetables. How long has it been there? I like to rip, rip the skin off. I like to rip the skin off because the rotisserie skin is always a little flabby. Take the skin off. Doesn't age well. Crisp it up in a nonstick pan and then use that fat to make like crispy chicken bits. Yeah. And then you can break up the, and I would taco that too. Yeah, I use yeah. or a rice ball. Wait, you're, make, you're taking the skin you dislodge and then frying that up after? Yeah, oh. no, first. Oh, and first. then get it out of the pan and then you have crispy skin and then you use the chicken fat to crisp up some torn pieces. Ooh, and that's then, a good and tip. And then anything with ma just mayo dips. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Um, oh, this is a fun one. Um, if you guys could pick one of each other's show to host, which would you pick? Jump, I'll start. On, jump on in. Me. Yeah. Okay. I will do it live. Yeah. My answer would be I, uh, none, because I love mine the best, to be honest. <laughs> I do. I wouldn't want to make any other show. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> I would say back to back. Oh, are we going down the line? You can just whoever wants I to jump in. I will do a gourmet mix. I think Sola should do gourmet mix. I think we should. I'll, really just, I'll retire. That. Sola can do it. I think either it's live or reverse engineering. Yeah. I think Andy would be good at reverse yeah. engineering. I'm yeah, terrified of reverse it. engineering or a gourmet mix. I would. Priya, you've got you've got. Those. I would say it's alive going places. Oh <laughs> yeah. yeah. I like. Go to Hawaii. Yeah. Yeah. Priya's Pri no dummy. Hawaii, yeah, she's Australia, like. Yeah. Oh, all right. Here's one actually. Why you got the mic, Priya? Um, Priya, when will hashtag Seth Bakes come to the BA Test Kitchen? <laughs> Follow Priya on Instagram. You'll know what that's about. Uh, I I just Seth is like so shy. I don't think he could ever yeah, right. be on camera. He's not camp. so shy when you've got your camera yeah, pointed at him. We're like, yeah, when we're in the kitchen, but like if a camera was pointed at him, he'd be deathly afraid. Um, he doesn't even like coming to like Bon Appetit parties. Is he here right now? No, he's in LA. Yeah. Ask. So. Um, Adam, please explain why you pronounce it Bon Appetit. <laughs> I'm so curious. <laughs> I literally have no um, idea. <laughs> I, I, if we could change the name of the magazine today, I would to something less Frenchy, but what, I don't know. What would you change the name know. of the magazine what would you, to? Yeah, well, that's a good question. That's actually like what we, we, we taught for a while. We were like, could we just call it BA? Like on the cover. Yeah. Like the I way Architectural like Digest has AD. Yeah. It's just a lot of letters. And but you're not answering the question. No, I have no idea why I pronounce it that way. Although someone pointed out on Instagram that on the podcast, um, I always say breakfast. I put another R in the breakfast, <laughs> which I'm like, oh yeah, I do that. I guess I've been doing that my whole life and never noticed. So, anyways, I'll work on both of those. Um, <laughs> Millie, who's 10. Where's Millie? Hi, Millie. Somewhere. There she is. Hi. Um, are you guys friends out of work? Yes. yes. Yeah. 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 Well, I know. <laughs> I would say, yeah, be Che and Andy argue at work, but outside of work, they get along great. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and at work, too. And at work, too. We're a big, chaotic, loving family that, uh, I don't know, I haven't got him mad at anybody. He's, we he's all get along. Size. That's what's so nice about it, you know, and that's, that's part of what makes it so special, I think, is that everyone involved does, like, have their own. Like you said, it's a big, crazy family. Yeah. And if it wasn't, it'd be boring, right? You know, so. Yeah, yeah I mean, encourage. the, the staff, like, evolved organically over years, you know, like, we've worked together for years and years and years in some cases, you know, so, yeah, it's like a family. There's some newer members, but, you know. <laughs> Um, I, like, I like you more than a lot of my family, so. 
<laughs> but there's a lot of hanging out outside of work, especially if we travel on trips and stuff. And obviously, some people have got kids and this and that. Some people go out more. We've gone out together, Molly. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> Why are you calling me out? <laughs> um. Oh, this is a good one. It's always a fashion one. There's always should be one fashion uh, question. Sola, you're so gorgeous. Oh. Where did you get that jumpsuit heart? Oh. <laughs> I told you. That, that was taken. Yeah. Yeah. From Madewell. Oh, there you go. I got it on the internet. The internet. <laughs> um, that's just cute. Happy belated birthday, Chris. <laughs> so... This is 40 plus one day. Yeah, so Andy and I were in California this week. We weren't in the office. What did we miss at, at the birthday party? Oh, my God. There was a, a donut tower with homemade sprinkles That's how I like from to spend Sola. my free time. How do you make homemade sprinkles? One at a time. One at a time. <laughs> Where were the donuts from? Uh, from Peter Pan Donut in um, Greenpoint. And Carla had left a cake. I have a feeling it might have been left over from something, but it still counts. Um... <laughs> <laughs> and Sarah Jempel bought me um, a, a whole grain loaf of um, the Pullman bread from She Wolf Bakery, which is my favorite thing in the world. Saves me a trip to the Green Market this week. Someone brought in half a rotisserie chicken. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. <laughs> okay, for all chefs. Oh, okay, this is actually an interesting question. We'll go quickly down the line. You got a f rapid fire. What are your hobbies outside of Von Epp? Molly, go. Tuna. <laughs> I was going to say writing a cookbook, but I, that probably doesn't count. Um, like movies, museums, enjoying New York. What? Bad TV. Oh, shh. <laughs> uh, cycling. Uh, my kids. <clears throat> Aww. It's not a hobby. Believe me. That's a job. job. <laughs> God damn hobby. There's no time for a hobby. Just my kids. <laughs> Uh, hiking, my extended family. Boys. Boys. <laughs> my dogs. Uh, like woodworking and outdoors. <laughs> and uh, yeah, stuff like that. What's a hobby? <laughs> no, I love my dog, Pucho, and I... I dance, and I do Pilates, and I walk, and I enjoy time with my friends. And I also watch bad TV, but I watch telenovelas in Espanol. Um, it's it. I don't have a hobby. I, parenting, parenting, I'm, I'm, it's my hobby. Um, okay, guys, this is the last question. I know. Uh, this question's been great, by the way. Thank you so much. Um, again, we're just gonna boomerang back this way. Um, and we need to know what your favorite restaurant in NYC is right now. <laughs> you guys better start taking the notes. Sorry, right, go ahead, Carla. I don't have one. You got to find one. I can't deal with the favorite thing, but um, I'm just going to say I, I went to Gee Whiz Diner, which is right by the office the other day. And I go to Gee Whiz when I want to feel better. And it's always there. And it's always the same. It's like quintessential great New York diner. What, what's your go-to order? Spinach and feta omelet rye toast. I didn't get fries this time, but fries I there. do. Mm. Yeah. And the coffee is like in a 30 ounce mug. It's incredible. <laughs> I felt great when I left. Gab? I live in Jersey City, so my favorite place is in Jersey City. I just wrote about it. Bread and salt. Go eat some good pizza. Right as well, I, I yeah. really like the favorites, and I don't, you know, I don't, and I, I don't really get out much. But I, you know, I, a special place in my heart, and I always will crave it, is up in Bryant Park. The, we were just talking about it too today. The uh, Sunrise Mart with the little onigiri, Ooh, yeah. a restaurant, hot sauce. Though. What? It's not a restaurant. Call whatever. Or lunch, though, and they got the little, they got the little katsu and everything. They feed me. Yeah. Oh, it's fantastic, and you can pick up some good rice if you want. It's nice. That's a good. I like that answer. Sola. Uh, I eat at Superiority Burger a lot. Oh Brooks is a good guy. He makes Brooks good food. Best, yeah. And like the best gelato anyway. Best gelato in town. Especially like in the summertime <laughs> with the fruit from you. Yeah, so if you haven't been to Superiority Burger, definitely go. I really don't know. I don't have a favorite. We're right by Flora Bar. Flora Bar, Flora Bar is great. Spicy Village. 
uh, Uncle Boone's, Stella Via Carota. These are all restaurants you guys should know. And he doesn't get out much. Priya. Probably a tie between Superiority Burger, like specifically Superiority Burger specials and gelato. Like if I'm anywhere in a 20 minute walking distance, I will just walk to Superiority Burger for dessert. And um, I also love like the Via Carota Isodi, uh, what's the third, what's the bar? Pisolino. Bar Pisolino. Bar Pisolino triangle. triangle. Yeah. If I can't get into one, you can always get into the other. You can, you can spend a lot of money in that triangle pretty quickly. <laughs> uh, mm, Maybe Chez Matant and Greenpoint. I don't know. It's just wow, perfect yeah, a good neighborhood restaurant, yeah. you know, uh, but worth traveling to. Um, I'm going to go Attaboy. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, good so every good. time. So good. This is such a hard question, and I think there's, like, a lot of ways to answer it, but is it, like, the restaurant you go to the most? Is it the one you save for a special occasion? I don't know, but the one, the, the one that comes to mind this is like definitely a special occasion restaurant because it's kind of expensive and kind of fancy, but it's um, it's also a secret. And I told Christina about it, and she went and loved it. And I was like, "Don't tell anyone." But it's the only You're answer about to I can tell think a of. Thousand people. I know, but don't, <laughs> but don't, don't but don't tell anyone. <laughs> but don't tell anyone. There's this incredible tempura restaurant called Tempura Matsui that's just like kind of by the UN. It's in like a weird neighborhood, but it, and like don't tell anyone because it's really small. <laughs> It's That's so it. perfect in every way. I love it so much. Huh. But like, it's it's like a pricey. So like, pick a birthday or something. Uh, but don't go because because <laughs> I love that no one knows about it. Um, I would have to say Bernie's. It's one of the greats. All right, uh, guys. Thank you all so much. Audience, thank you. Um, on your way out, if you want to buy something, there's hats and tote bags and t-shirts. Uh, and please indulge. Thanks so much, guys.